So you're having some coffee? Welcome back, everybody. Um, this is about communications. The core piece here is the website that's been up since uh, 2018. Uh, a lot of hard work went into collecting all of the information from all of the villages that detail our past history. Katie Labrador led that charge. We deeply appreciate the many, many hours she spent chasing after each one of you pastoring you until you gave us what we wanted. Uh, Jack Haley is a right-hand man in terms of pushing buttons and pulling levers. I'm the webmaster. Um, we all collaborated on the design of the site. I'm responsible for the underpinnings and general direction of the, uh, of the project. Uh, <clears throat> we started this out in response to the uh, success of the gathering in, in 2017. We realized there was so much energy there, we wanted to capture it in some way. So the, this is the result of that. And we wanted at the same time for this, not only to be archival, but also a live instrument that people could use for communication back and forth as we move forward with the next stages in the evolution of the Amigos project. I'd like to uh, just do a top level um, run through the website and show you the materials that are there and then talk a little bit about how it fits into the communication plan and some changes, hopefully improvements that we have planned for the future. Uh, so I'm going to, unfortunately, since I'm recording this, we're limited to half a screen. So uh, and uh, this will be on the website for other people to see and learn about. Uh, if you notice across the top, we have a short number of, of uh, options, read posts, Amigos Photo Gallery, about us and contact. All of those are fairly straightforward. If you want to send us any information, questions, comments, that's what that's for. You fill out the, uh, the form and you click on submit. Uh, about tells you a little bit about the history, how it got going. And if you have another comment, you can put it in. Comments are enabled basically throughout the entire website. So at, at any given moment, if you see something that interests you or attracts you, fill out the comment, press submit, we'll receive an email alert and uh, add it to the website. Photo gallery, which I think is the centerpiece of the whole site, um, is arranged chronologically um, most recent first. So Andrea Nevins recently uh, sent us photos of Padre Rosendo's uh, birthday celebration in March. Kevin graciously shared his latest trip to Mexico City and Oaxaca. If we click on uh, any picture, we go deeper down into the uh, 
set of pictures that he's provided. You can see some from uh, uh, Mexico City, um, others from Oaxaca. There you go. <laughs> I want to say just one thing about that alligator. I okay. The young guy's <laughs> conservation area. And so we've got a somewhat obnoxious uh, older white guy from California who I later uh, heard was a truck voter. Oh. And this young Mexican guy um, approached the alligator. The alligator sort of lives by the side of this dock and threw him a piece of chicken. And then he said, watch out, the white guy. He likes white meat. <laughs> Beautiful. Each, uh, <laughs> each village has its own gallery, and we've labeled them. So here's San Mateo Tapasca, which I'll return to for some special reasons. And uh, you just scroll down till you get your, um, your village, and you click, and you go into um, we thank Don Sackheim, who's not here, Amherst uh, class of 67, for a stellar job of recording. Um, there are some people, that's Mark Peterson, who you saw yesterday. That's me. Um, do you recognize this young lady here? And that's Dorsey McGowan, um, Ed Kahn, Nick Cobbs, uh, and then... Francis Spina on the far left, Margie uh, Olson Gregory, who unfortunately couldn't attend us. Then we go back to our um, 50th reunion, May 27th, 28th. The usual suspects here who put that, that together. And then we go way back to the history. There's Dick, there's Jack. Um, where's Bill? Is that Terry? Terry, oh, there's Bill. And Terry, who, who didn't make it, John Steinhardt, I know some of these guys. So that's basically how it's, 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 it's organized. Um, if you click on any one picture, you can get more details. So here's, here's a, a, a larger rendering. Again, comments anytime you want. Now, now a, a central feature of this website is, is, is the post, which is basically uh, the addition of new information. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about how those are, are central. So you can see here uh, recent topics that we've added in. And these are uh, range as far as a discussion of Roma, the movie that we saw, uh, Katie Rockhill's uh, trip to uh, Mexico in the fall, Mexico City, including photos. I think we have a... Uh, well, this one doesn't link to a gallery, but we do have her uh, her uh, contributions in the larger thing. Philosophical thoughts, what we live for, uh, discussions, etc. And this is the section of the website that we think of as dynamic that people can actually contribute to uh, moving forward. So I'm going to jump right away to show you how that actually works. This is the um, website that I developed for my class at Williams for our 50th reunion has already taken place. But um, this is what we use for people to add uh, updates and even include photographs. So it's a very easy way of getting your most recent uh, thoughts and images up to us and we can do that. So uh, in essence, you fill in name, a title for what you we have anti spam here content and then simply submit and that comes to us as a team we process it and then add it on onto the site and it actually shows up as a as a post in Can this you category sit down for a second absolutely uh, for those of us who need a little more help <laughs> Can you, where do you type in the text and where do you put pictures? Absolutely. So let's, um, let's go back to the, uh, to the top level and let's say we wanted to contribute. This one is not, doesn't have the pictures enabled. Oh, okay. So we would need to make a special tutorial to show you how to do that. This is being recorded by the way, so you can, you can review it. So I'd click on post your news and there's a form that, uh, that you fill out. You put your name, 
you put the title, uh, we have an anti-spam question, and then content here. So you say, hi, I'm in Cuernavaca this week, blah, blah, blah. This is the news, and then at the very bottom, submit post. But you can make it bigger than that, right? It will allow you to keep typing. Oh, yeah, you can type as long as you want. You're not constrained by the size of the box. Yeah. So this is the Williams one, right? Yeah, this is enabled on the Williams one, currently not on, oh, okay. on, on the Amherst so one. That's just exactly. That's, that's the news as we talk about the website as a forum, as a, as a location for people to update and share their news. So you could just paste something there too. If you had something in another document. Yes, you could. Yeah. Cut and paste. It would work fine. Except yeah. the format. Is yeah. this word text? Um, word I have text? never experimented yeah. trying to paste in because a word document. I wrote with, got posted, the formatting got messed up. So the, the tab settings and some of the symbols that were used, um, some of the bullets, the different bullets were adapted the way you show up as a little yeah. question mark box or something. Yeah. Um, so what format should we use? Uh, well, I think the, the default format is just text typing in using your keyboard right here. Um, so you would, or if you had it written. Uh, the other thing is, if you do a copy and paste, yeah. take a look at it before you press it. <laughs> yeah, well, it may not, it may not, the, the bad news may follow. Let me, that's an interesting concern. Let me uh, push forward and see if I can give you more details. There are ways to. Uh, remedy the, the cut and paste problem. All right, right now there is, you, you can't click on like a, um, a paper clip to attach the photos? No, that's not enabled, although it is, okay. um, this is what they call a plug-in. It's a, a special software component that you actually buy to link in. We should talk about supporting the website uh, as, as we but close. But yeah. people do have photographs. Yeah, it's very easy to send them to us yes. via the post. It is unfortunately not enabled in either site here to show, but in, in a third one, which I don't have uh, available to show right now, you can uh, just like uploading uh, an attachment to an email message. It's the exact same process. You can search for where it is in your machine, click add, and it will filter in. And then that will come to us in the form of a post people who are administering the website will get an email message saying so-and-so has submitted a new post, uh, do you approve it or not? And the minute we approve it, it goes into the, uh, into the uh, posts section and you can find it right here. Um, so that is enabled already. It's not yet enabled. Oh, okay. and so, I, yeah. But, but so if someone, if today yeah. I want, I'm inspired yeah. uh, and I want to send you a photograph, what do I do? Just email uh, you a photograph? Yeah, or text it, <laughs> or airdrop it. <laughs> but yeah. to, to you, not to the site. Right. It, that, it's not yet enabled, yeah. and I think it will not be till I get back to Seattle so, and send out some news. But if you are inspired today, <laughs> don't wait. <laughs> or you can send it. Uh, yeah. yeah, so both Jack and myself will be on the road for the next several days. Um, I'm returning, Carmen and I, on the 26th. So as of the 27th, we'll be able to manage any uh, new materials that you have. In the meantime, you can send email. Um, I think my address is out there, but... Uh, um, contact us? Does it uh, launch a, or can you... It, does, it launches a... Uh, email. Yeah, a, a, oh, okay. right there. So you can't submit a photo. Not yet, no. And and this one. And then yours is Jack uh -huh. at, at GAC Institute. So these are the two um, email addresses that you can use in the interim. Thoughts, impressions, you can include photos that you took or find later on and we'll be happy to add them. Yeah, so there we go. If, if you go back or screen to the, um, 
to the news that we had just where where we were back one. Yeah, and go down and look at uh, 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 Katie's trip. Yeah, there's your trip. Well, yeah, but look at click on Katie's continue reading, and then go down and you'll see a, a note that Alexa then sent in response. Ah, here's a comment, uh, which is a, um, and you'll see that um, anybody it's called leave a reply, but in essence it's a, it's a comment. So you fill out your name. Your email address, the stars indicate that that's a required field. Website, I'll probably get rid of that since not all of us have our own personal websites. Uh, and then you click there to post the comment. So you can see Alexa has uh, left a, a comment for us there. Thanks for this good read, long time ago, et cetera, et cetera. So anyone else can, uh, can reply to that particular comment or add a new comment. So you get a chain of uh, reactions to um, the original post. And that's the, the, uh, another innovation that we want to introduce. So every time that happens, um, you get an alert. If you want, if you don't, you won't. But uh, we'll send an email message to those who are interested and concerned and with a link in it. And then you just click on the link and it will take you right to that particular comment. And that can sometimes be valuable when a, uh, a topic generates a lot of discussion. You know, so for example, summer, uh, our trip to, to Mexico, and someone has new ideas and the, the chain starts expanding. It's recorded so you don't have to fish back through your email and it all sits on the website. <clears throat> it's an advantage that the website has over things like Twitter and Facebook with just one big long river. This is more like a lake, but it does allow uh, uh, interim communications back and forth via the posting capability. And if you get stuck, always send email to, to one of us and we'll make sure that it, it gets in. A brief thought that just occurred to me about the way we're sending email to you. We created an email address, amigosprojectteam at gmail.com. You've probably all received email with updates. We formatted, formatted the messages. We have pictures and links in that. Um, that is an address that we use for convenience. It is not ideal because if you respond to that email, it will go only to myself and Jack. Uh, what we would like to have, and this would require further work and uh, in, in all likelihood, uh, a larger investment of money also time, is a system where uh, everything goes to everybody. So we send to you, you reply to the entire group. Okay, so you'd have another form of exchange of ideas. But as, as it, things are now, Amigos Project Team at gmail.com really is more of a one-way uh, proposition. You reply, we get it, then we can add that information onto the website manually. Uh, so that others can see it. Uh, and that's also a, a, a way to, to reach us. A little bit about how the site is organized uh, uh, visually. Um, we made front and center a, a map of the state of Mexico, the, the little circles tell us, and stars inside uh, exactly where we work. So uh, this basically is a lot of history you scroll down and you can see representations of uh, from different points in time of uh, since shown we just have uh, uh, Barbara's Sanderson Cummings Cumming, I think yeah. her married name yeah uh, pictures uh, if you click on each one of these uh, you get into the let's take Tapasco which Katie and I know and love uh, and then we go down to a uh, a picture here's from the the group that showed up at the at the 50th reunion there's Don Sackheim Katie myself uh, Steve Foster and Jan Bidham Pilcher um, I think if we no that's not the doing um, each person uh, wrote uh, uh, their thoughts so you can go and see what Steve Foster who was the leader actually said quite a bit about his experience. <laughs> he, did not, he did not spare. 
you may not have yet done this, but it, it's very interesting to see. Um, I think uh, I have one that also doesn't shrink on words, but not as loquacious. Um, and uh, there should be a link here to the photo pages. Ah, yes, here it is. Uh, and these are um, by various members of the team. Here's the Kurata where we stayed three to a bed inside sleeping bags. That's the guys, Karen Everly and her pictures. So, it, yeah, no, they don't. So uh, you keep clicking to go down into the actual photo sets. And it's, it's an interesting thing to go through the, here's the kitchen, for example, that we put together in Tapasco and cooked our own meals, uh, had our own little society. Um, there's me playing the guitar, Claudia Burnett, some of you may remember her. Uh, so all of these, I think, add to our memories and pass on to others, you know, what the experience was like. Uh, and they're all accessible um, from various directions, but I think the where we work, what we did, what we learned really comes out here starting in with a map. I'll quickly switch over to the right hand column, which we use for current information, new things uh, that are coming up that might be of interest. So, um, and these are somewhat like posts, we update them fairly frequently. Uh, uh, the, what we, where we worked, what we did, what we learned is fairly static. I mean, there haven't been any more, uh, much continuity, unfortunately, to the Amigos project. Um, the Amigos is almost here, final details, schedule, um, uh, link to the registration. That's another thing that we can use forms to register. Um, you want meals, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and uh, schedule being listed here. Uh, I think I got that that come through. Yeah. So uh, we and, and then uh, we have featured content um, every time we do an update. There's no regular schedules. When we get enough good stuff, then then we send out email advising. Uh, a lot of the communications were driven by this meeting, so we wanted to make sure we had regular updates. But there's a lot of material in here uh, that, that you can find. If you scroll down here a little further, uh, this is automated. So every time there's a new comment, um, it gets added to this list. And you can click there to go uh, right away to see what's there. So Kathleen couldn't attend, uh, but she was uh, interested in making a few comments, including on your detailed mapping of possible future directions. Um, uh, Marsh and Peter. Suggested topics and then scrolling a little further down. We have uh, a list of the of the most recent posts. So think of the right hand column as sort of a guide to uh, current information and also a way to look up things that um, you might want to remember. Uh, so let's just take Amigos News, which came out in January. Uh, tidbits, somewhat like a newsletter. And we just sort of put this together. And then some comments, Noreen, Kevin, who else got in there? Alexa, yeah. So we can see that this back and forth is already working. Uh, but uh, up until now, you really have to go to the website and, and scroll down and see if someone has submitted something, if there's new information, rather than getting an email alert. So we think with the energy generated here, we can begin to do this manually, especially as we reach out and hopefully use the, uh, the submit your post technology to gather information, impressions of this meeting, other thoughts. Uh, remember, we have a whole uh, new set of concerns that were generated. How do we work on those? The website can be sort of a central uh, drinking fountain, if you will, water cooler, where we can contribute our thoughts and, and make comments back and forth. Um, 
That said, um, the technology we've been using here, to, branching out to talk in a larger sense about communications, relies on a, a new and very exciting tool called Zoom. And Zoom allows people to connect in various parts of the world, see each other's faces, share the information on a single desktop or shift desk desktops in between, and also can be recorded. So the majority or all so far of this particular meeting has been recorded via Zoom and will be uh, added uh, sooner rather than later to the website. So you can actually go back and look and see what you said. Good moment to talk about communications because you'll notice what Katie is furiously scribbling away and has been doing so since yesterday. Uh, Jack was caught doing this as well. He may have had his fill. And uh, who else was uh, a note taker? We've been very fortunate. Uh, okay, yeah, so this is of, of enormous value. All this information about what we said. I can't remember what happened at 11 yesterday, but we now are able to recuperate that information. So fortunately that would be channeled and we're very grateful for this uh, contribution. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else about what functions, what we're trying to accomplish, uh, featured content that we add in, suggestions for featured content are always welcome. Um, I did talk about search uh, as a way to um, find your way around. So I did mention the word uh, magenta yesterday. And that was a, a color uh, that has a key. Um, let's see if I can. Okay. Do you want to tell us about that? Oh, she just oh, disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> it's her story to tell. I think it's precious. We were wondering, you know, what good did we do? Why were we there? You know, we couldn't change the world. We couldn't erase poverty in two months. Uh, we couldn't improve the Aikido system, uh, but we did have some impact, and it, it's likely that that, that affects, those effects continue to, uh, that lasted, so. Um, if you can uh, read that paragraph where the yellow uh, of the magenta is, is highlighted. Why don't you read it for us? Okay. One of the activities we did in Tabasco was to take art supplies to the schools for the children to use. I think a lot of these went to the Indian schools, which were outside the main educational system. One day we went to a tiny school in one of the outlying hamlets where the Indians lived. At the end of the hour, we collected all the crayons. I think there was a big Crayola box, 48 colors. All the children handed in their crayons. We put them back in the box and there was one missing. The teacher told the children everyone had to hand in the crayons. One little girl, uh, wrapped in her traditional rebozo, huddled in, her, in on herself, slowly unwrapped her arms, reluctantly unclenching her hands. In her hand was the magenta crayon. So uh, that the crayon, the, the magenta, was actually a color that was significant for the village of, of Tapasco. So, you can see how, how powerful a crayon can be. Uh, and, and the search will allow you to uh, uh, go in there. And let's see if we were to just give one more example. We should find a lot about uh, Jack Haley, what he wrote, comments. This will bring up everything. So Jack's, you can see, uh, yeah. Any, would anyone like to suggest another search item? I think at some point there was an understanding that Sherman was spelled with, with two N's, which was erroneous. Ah, good, then we've gotten rid of that. <laughs> There's Rogers. So that can go into pages, it can go anywhere on the website and bring up uh, what you're, uh, you're doing. Um, which is important because the, the website is kind of like a scroll and you get new material and uh, the same thing, you don't go to the New York Times website and expect to find yesterday's news foregrounded 
you probably are going to use some form of search pattern to retrieve that. Uh, and there is a, a lot of information uh, in there that uh, needs to be retrieved in this particular way. To the point where you could almost argue that an, an index would be, be helpful. Um, we have, for example, the news, which bill was it Kiki Pilko that had the newsletter yeah. that yeah. did such a marvelous job? Yeah, we have, um, I think if we search on that, we'll, we'll bring up a sample page from the newsletter. Yeah, that was, uh, so, unfortunately this one doesn't open. Uh, some of the pictures will expand, but there was a whole article about that. I think we put this in, yeah, there you go. So, uh, God, this was tremendous, the work you guys put in on this. Yeah, absolutely amazing. So we preserved that and that kind of information that Katie collected for us and that we uh, scanned or otherwise coerced into, uh, into uh, format so that we could display it on the website. And then down here, little cultural section. Uh, De Colores was one of Dick Aronson's favorite. He didn't sing it for us yesterday. Uh, <laughs> We started out uh, Cucuruku Paloma, uh, Lola Beltran, the famous thing, which books would really uh, tell us a lot. So we have the Brown, I think Pembroke was live in those days. Is it yeah. still around, Pembroke? Yeah. Uh, it's become completely brown. Yeah. So here we go, uh, the original uh, bibliography that was suggested, uh, it's Peter's work here. Uh, do you remember that, Peter? <laughs> so we are so grateful to have these materials um, that uh, really, I think, augment the experience that we had in Mexico and, and add more depth. So some of the major uh, works, um, some of the fiction that was pertinent to us under the volcano, Malcolm Lowry, Plume Serpent, Power and the Glory, amazing book. And then uh, one of the great thinkers and poets of all time from Mexico, Octavio Paz, his classic book on, on uh, Mexican culture, The Labyrinth of Solitude. So a lot in here that um, might not originally uh, meet the eye and digging in further and using the search <laughs> capability is uh, an excellent way to acquaint yourself with what's there. Uh, so you could also, let's say, um, search by village no, this is, uh, yeah. Let me just mention, Paula has a better copy of the Wiki Pilko newsletter than yeah. what I had. I had the old line of a statement, eight and a half by 14 or 11 yeah. or something, and I had to fold it so there are creases in it. But your copy is I can get it from my car. Oh, really? Yeah. And, and we could take pictures of it? We could take that. Wow. <laughs> you missed, yeah. Song yeah. No, I don't think overlapping is a problem. That's just the archival value. Excellent. I'll lend you my umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> so just one final example. I did a, a search on um, Tapasco to bring in what was there. So you can put the name of your village in there. And uh, it will bring up from comments, from posts, from other other sources and um, uh, other simple pages of the website. So just to sum up, uh, we want to add the ability for user submitted posts. You put your words and your photographs in there. We want to add the capability of alerting all subscribers, all members of our community that there is new information. Supply a link so you just click. We want to encourage uh, communication back and forth. Um, hopefully we can en engage people also with a wonderful Zoom tool where you sit in front of your computer, use its uh, little camera, and people can see you in Anchorage, Alaska, Sacramento, California, Seattle, Washington, Pasadena, wherever they might be, Goshen, Massachusetts, uh, and 
actual in real time do some conversing discussion about what next steps might be available. Um, the uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm curious. I never quite know or knew or know now sort of the genesis of this project. I mean, whose thought it was? Is there any of that history here? There is, and we didn't scroll down far enough. Um, so we have, um, we, we basically, uh, in the original design, sort of uh, created the frame of mind. Here we are, we're ready to go. What was this like? So we dug back in. So we have um, preparing to go, getting ready. Yeah, I'll go further down directly to yeah. And history of the Amigos project. That's probably where you want to go. And so uh, Jack um, put together a wonderful essay. Uh, there's Peter Williams um, adds in Jack replies. Here's something from the Amherst end of the Amigos. There was a lot of coverage locally. So from the Amherst student, the student paper from, from the college, uh, if you can scroll down, there's, there's Ivan Illich. Yeah. Um, uh, we, we've already seen this picture, the gang of uh, eight, nine from, from Amherst that was responsible for the Amherst, very powerful sector. Um, and open house. Brown Pembroke. Yeah, so the history is in there and it's expandable. Anything you want uh, can be submitted um, to do. So that was the, yeah. Excuse me, but the 50 year on history, I think it was you and Jack for the, the idea for the website. Yeah. For carrying on after the reunion. Yeah. Jack, wasn't it you and Sandy talking? Well, yes, and people didn't want to do a Facebook page, but wanted something and, and, and else yeah. said, yeah, put something together. So I, I neglected to give the full uh, nickel tour of, of the front page. So we stopped with the who we are and what we did, which is a, a rich feast in and of itself, preparing to go, getting there in village life, picture of the bus that we all rode variants of, the history of the project, which we just reviewed. Um, our lives since Mexico, um, who's been doing what, uh, so, and comments. Uh, so, uh, Peggy Dennis, who's not Noreen, uh, Bill, you know, so we have a lot of information that's just collected. Uh, yeah. Do you want, uh, is that who's been doing what? Is yeah. that? something you want to have filled in for absolutely everybody absolutely yeah so if we take a note on a that to, uh, to to add to case <laughs> long suffering but valiant add and it's still early isn't it it's not a requirement no exactly yeah i'd never do it unless he's asked <laughs> to, there we go you, know. you and everybody else put the cards down first yeah. <laughs> yeah let's see what you got yeah unfortunately um, we did a lot of that the first two or three hours two years ago well, what have people been doing and i didn't push the button to record the second <laughs> oh. i had and um, so um, what's on there now are, are either things that we had from other things, from things people that sent us and we could clip out the kind of what I'm doing, or a couple of people wrote something, but anyone who would like to should have to. I think it would be nice to just some, something very brief, what occupations people ended up with. Um, we had a common thread of a lot of people teaching ESL, for example. Yes. It would be nice to know who's been doing that and um, who became lawyers and who became whatever. Um, doesn't have to be long, but I think a little directory, yes. an up-to-date directory would be nice. Fantastic. And then uh, forward-looking um, actions, opportunities, and proposals, which is what we spent most of yesterday talking about. Uh, and we could even rearrange the website. So this got further up. Kevin is there and Lori uh, Liss Millman, who was 
joined us in 2017. Again, click on the photo and much will be revealed. Um, you can go down and uh, see the, the, the various categories. Of course, this needs to be fleshed out. Um, you can see um, support for various activities. I think that's, is that Terry Ellen? Yeah. Well, we need more, uh, obviously. But we felt that that was an important uh, component to add to the website so that you could get the idea of continuity. It wasn't just those uh, months or it's sequential months in different years of over 50 years ago. Uh, what are your <laughs> thoughts about password protecting this or having double authentication, authentication for, for stuff? The more we put personal things on like some sort of directory or inventory, the more concerned I get about yeah. public access. Excellent point. So we, uh, we do have the capability. Um, I'm not bringing up the secure version of the site. I should be under HTTPS. Um, but with inside, there is the possibility of creating uh, passworded pages. So for a directory, another workaround is click this link, fill out a form, and we'll send you uh, via email a PDF of that information. So it's not sitting on the website. No one can grab it, but uh, we can send it to you directly. Yeah, that is a valid concern, I think. Uh, you don't well, we want that person. For that reason, we don't have a page of everybody's email. No, we don't. Or, no. For the attendee list, just recently, the emails were on it. Oh, yeah. That's true. So we could take that down then. Sure. Sure. Or at least delete the email. It would be nice to have everyone's email yeah. addresses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, if it's done that way. Yeah, right here. Be very careful yeah. not to put emails on when we plan what we, how we yeah. time. So this is temporary. The trolls in St. Petersburg already have it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we got it. Yeah, they're completely <laughs> bored. <laughs> not to mention <laughs> Shanghai and Beijing. Oh, no Trump people. Yeah, I will not yeah. <laughs> Okay, take take note. Thank you. I I'd forgotten. I think uh, Jack was anxious to have people talk to each other, and I we all I think would agree that in case people wanted to yeah before yeah. 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 I, 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 I don't. I mean, people should be judicious about what they put up on this, but I just assume it had to be public. Yeah. Well, you say there's a capability of certain pages. Yeah. Certain pages can be. Yeah. And other websites I've done that. It's annoying because you have yet another password to store and remember. Uh, and I think I, I've discovered that in designing websites, the more passworded you get, the less <laughs> traffic you get. People say, I don't remember. That. Uh, it's too much. I don't. Yeah. I'll look at it tomorrow, and then it sort of passes into oblivion. So should we vote on a policy now? We spent a lot of time discussing, and we came out with um, no emails shall ever be put on the website. <laughs> um, how about a one-time thing where we can all print it out and then make it disappear? <laughs> well, I like the idea of the, of the document that can be mailed. Would you like the email <laughs> addresses and other contact information of, of members of the group? Yes? Okay, we'll send it to you. And that's just a list of those who are asking that they're going to be here. Yeah. Uh, it does, we have another 20 five or thirty email addresses. And I think we need to check unless there are a couple people who are sensitive. We'd have to get permission yeah. before we That's just right. Yeah. Just yes, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. 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 Email to the group. We'd like to create a directory. This is how we'll do it. Uh, do please in a good way to ask, please let us know if you don't want your information mm -hmm. to be included. The negative is the faster way. Yeah. Yeah, I think I mean I'm calling with Presumption that this stuff is public. Don't put private information you don't want to get out there because there's no guarantee anyway for cybersecurity. But if you want to designate certain things or do something different for email address, I don't mind my email address being on there. So, but 
But I think we have to worry about everything, giving permission to this, that. I think it just really gets in the way. It is inconvenient, but uh, it may be a necessary precaution. I mean, on the email thing, I, I suppose an alternative would be for this Amigos email to be multifunctional so that it could be like a group email yeah. that people would yeah. be able to get. Um, and your individual email addresses would be out there, but you could always use that email to get a message out to the group if it were functional in that way. Yeah. Well, the email alias that we hope to. Uh, create or evolve towards would be one that is a separate channel uh, parallel to the website. So um, I, uh, Amigos, we just call it Amigos Project um, uh, at uh, amigosproject.org. You can use the actual domain name in an email address. We just haven't done that. It's another. I suppose that's, you know, we, Roger's got us and he built the going as a solution. Separate little email chain. So it was just. Is one that Google one. Groups or? No, we've we, we not set, set up as a group. Okay. I just. I don't know whether it's something. I started out blind seeing, seeing everyone because I, I've had too many people who, who just put two and then everybody lists dozens of people who were, you know, you don't even know. And then those people get hacked and then pretty soon they're sending out emails. Don't open any email from you. Any further questions? I know we have other topics to deal with this morning. Did you come out in the resolution? Oh, we uh, we did not. No. The last. Was there was going to be a document with everybody's email yeah. that would be doing yeah. email? Yeah, I understood that to be a viable solution, but I don't know if it's explicit. Um, in terms of what we can do as in communications, preceded by uh, a general announcement that unless you tell us otherwise, we're going to proceed with this. If you object, send email and we'll strike your information from the list. Um, on, on, in the experience that I've had with these matters, you, you wait for someone to say yes, and they, they don't it's answer their email. They're often Fairbanks, you know, Alaska, something like that. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Uh, so, all those opposed? And then, and then the, <laughs> we, we, we wait a few weeks, we get this, and then we'll email the email list to everyone. Yeah. yeah. And, and put a note on the website in case somebody misses it. Would you like to know who your, uh, your folks are? And we could expand this list uh, to even include what they're doing now. Uh, you know. Well, let's just do the email yeah. address. Yeah. Yeah. And, Separate. And, okay. and work yeah. on the directory. Yeah, yeah. 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 I suspect that in our further conversations, we're going to find that there are groups that want to go, for example, to um, the Kino um, location. And are we going to put them in a separate place? Or because um, there will be emails back and forth. And, and, Discussions back and forth. We can just have a way. Way. Well, we can, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of ways to do that. Uh, we could use the website as a bridge for that. You could create a post about the uh, Kino uh, experience that uh, Peter reported on and uh, say, Are you interested? So the comment chain would be the information source for that. Um, we would email to the larger public comments about that so if people wanted to they could join in but the members uh, who were interested would also receive the same email so uh, comment reply comment reply comment reply would follow from that particular topic and it would still be uh, available to everybody on the website so basically it'd be on the website yeah the information would be and retained have to agree to have their email used during that period of time i mean i think we create a kind of, we create a kind of, uh, I don't know, how, how do you do that? How do you decide when emails can be published and when they aren't published? Well, I think, I think, yeah, go ahead. I'm just going to say, with what you're describing, only you would have the emails, uh, or you and Jack, to send out something to tell the people who are going on the keynote thing, there's yeah. a new post or something. 
and we wouldn't email each other directly unless we. They would go to go directly. To the, the post would be to everybody. Yeah. So let's uh, let's just look quickly at, at an example from Kathleen's yeah, no, I think comment. What I would suggest yeah. is I find out the details about what would be possible and put that could be posted mm -hmm. as a post and say anybody who is interested let us know by such and such a date. Mm -hmm. After that, a lot of the email back and forth is. When is your flight arriving in Tucson? Yeah. When it, you know, yeah. and uh, if you want to stay in a hotel in Tucson, do this. That doesn't belong. I mean, that's just yeah. kind of clear up there. I so think that people would just have a group email, yeah. and you do, do a lot of right. And then afterwards, the group could then report yeah. stuff that goes right. on. So yeah. Yeah. I just yeah. wanted to uh, bring out that Kathleen's post does not carry any identifier with it other than her name. And this is true for all others. So the email address is not here. Uh, so mm -hmm. to to submit a uh, uh, as it says, your address will not be published. To submit a reply or continue that, you you do need to have your email address so we can authenticate you, because we get an alert. It doesn't go directly to the website. It comes to the administration team, which is mainly me. And Jack also gets it if you wants to. Uh, we press a button and say, okay, good to go. And then boom, it shows up on the website. So it's filtered before it gets there. But as, as you can see, there's no identifier there. And uh, the granular type things like uh, what time you arrive in Tucson, uh, there's no reason you can't do it this way. Therefore, if you lose the email message that somebody said, or you can't find it in your email, it's on the website, so there are two sides to that question. However annoying it might be to have that level of detail on the website. I know we have other things uh, on board this morning. Uh, are there any questions or concerns? When well, you're talking about support, is that part oh, of the discussion? Oh, thank you for remembering yeah. that. Yeah. I think this is great work. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, this website would be nowhere without all of you. <laughs> We'd have an empty shell. And nothing to show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I would defer to Jack as the leader in terms of I can give you an overview of, of the expenses that we have. We host this website uh, with an outfit called WP Engine in Austin, Texas, and they are excellent in terms of security, a top-notch organization. It's uh, hanging off another account that I have. I think it's about uh, $260 a year just to keep it on there. Uh, there are uh, pieces like uh, that we use, like the user submitted posts that are what they call plugins. They're little mini software packages that we add on that have fees that are uh, part of the annual expense. Um, we have the domain name registration amigosproject.org, which is up for renewal in the next two weeks, as a matter of fact. We usually save a little bit by renewing it for three years at a time, but that's another expense. And if we um, dig deeper into the um, automation of comments and replies going out to everybody who's on the mailing list, that may entail a, an additional expense. I may be able to fund that from other sources, but if it comes to, to the point where we want to do a, a top-notch job, I may bring in a developer. In fact, I've opened conversations with several of them. Uh, it's the kind of thing I used to do but don't do anymore and wouldn't want to uh, 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 spend the time with it. Yeah. Join? Could be. That's one way. To, what's one way to work work out? I think the first step is to give a more accurate assessment of the yearly costs, right, right. and then that's say, exactly. so so far, um, Katie, uh, Matt has been very generous. Uh, Jack and myself have been uh, paying out of our own pockets because uh, we wanted it to happen. 
and we didn't feel that you know we could give something of value. You can see the value, and from there, then we can move forward as a group, see what we can do. Good point. Thanks for asking the question. Oh, oh, oh you. Thanks for asking yeah. the question. Yeah. So, um, back to you know. well, uh, the, the the two sixty a year, uh, and then the the one that's due soon is about thirty. Yeah, uh, it's it's the last time it was about uh, 15, 16 bucks for yeah. the year. So it's under three hundred, and at this point, it's probably uh, I think Matt and Katie did it first year, and I did it this year. And if if it's burdensome, we can let people know, but it, it's almost easier to just make that as a contribution instead of some of the space that I'm at now, so then try to collect. Mm -hmm. Well, so, definitely do, because I have more than you. Yeah. yeah. We don't want you to try it. So don't be reluctant. Well, it's good. Well, you put another list in your $54. Yeah. So yeah. you donate 10 more dollars. All right. We'll, we'll figure, figure it out. I'm happy to put that. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So yeah. if you want to, you know, <laughs> if on, on your way out, if you want to leave a check for Jack as your contribution to the website, he will graciously accept it. Yeah, it, it, there are going to be other. I mean, you know, but thank you. Yeah, if you want to, and and yes, if you haven't paid for meals, that would be great. Uh, uh, and, and thank you for everybody who has. But it's pretty minimal. I think. Shall we uh, put a comma and, or are there other questions about the website that? And the general communications goals that would need further clarification. And, uh, it was interesting to me that there were at least five or six people two years ago who said we don't want to do this through Facebook. And, yeah. uh, I'm sort of glad we did it. It's a sure. lot of extra work. Yeah. yeah. I think we know more about Facebook now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm I'm gonna. Um, 